Let's take a look at how easy it is to make samples using Halion 4 with Cubase and WaveLab. One of the things I wanted to do was to actually make a bass sample that actually included all notes on all frets of all strings. So I could actually pick different voicings and choose what string the note was actually coming from. Now I recorded these notes directly into Cubase and I set up names and I named them my E string, note E1, my E string, F1, etc. So when I recorded, these will be the names of the files. And I let it go for about eight seconds. So if I want to start off, I could actually start with a blank instance of Halion 4. And what I could do is I'm going to select all of my E strings here. So all the notes are on my E string. And I just drag it directly from Cubase right into a program slot. Now I could have mapping options, and I have it mapped so that it'll automatically be mapped from the sample name. So when it sees E, F2, that would automatically place that note at F2. So I'm going to hit OK. And now we can see all of our samples. Now I wanted to actually just call this Jazz Bass. And now I wanted to be able to treat my E, A, D, and G strings independently. So I want to put these into different layers. So I'm going to right click here. Let's go to new layer, and we're going to call this E string. Now as I do this, I'm going to select the samples on my E string. I'll select the top sample, hold down the shift key, select the bottom sample, and let's just drag it right into my E string. So now on my E string layer, I have all those samples. Now let's say if I actually wanted to do sample editing, I could come right over here, use my scroll wheel, I could select a particular sample, and then under the editing, we have our mapping tab selected currently. I could go to my sample. Now, I have all sorts of great editing options directly here in the sample editor. But under options, I've also set it up for external wave editor to open up in WaveLab. So now when I come over here, I can now right click, go to sample, and I could open in an external editor that will launch the sample in the WaveLab. I can now just come over here, do fade outs or make it louder. And at that point, once I save, it's automatically carried directly over back into Halion. So great integration between both Cubase, WaveLab, and Halion. Now, if I wanted to make another layer, I'm going to come right over here, select this. We'll choose new layer, and I want to have this for my A string. So we'll go ahead and label this. So we'll just click. And we'll go ahead and kind of minimize that layer. And let's go to our mapping. Now, what I want to do is just come here. And as I wanted to so open up my A string folder, so these are the samples of every note on the A string at every fret, I'm going to select these. Now, you saw that I could just drag it into an empty slot rack, but I could also just drag it directly into my mapping zone. And so if I wanted to have the samples spread across as I move the mouse up and down, I could have it to be an individual note or have each note stacked for different velocities, curves. So if I have this kind of moved over here, I can now select these. Now I'm going to have different samples from different layers visible. So if I wanted to come here, I could also just right click and choose auto visibility. And that way, when I select my different layers, I can only see what's on my E string layer and what's on my A string layer. Now, I can now take all the notes, select them in my A string layer, come here, choose mapping, right click, choose mapping, and I say I want it to be mapped to the key text in the sample name. Now, I only had a four string base to sample with, so if I wanted to, I could come right over here. Let's take the E, and we'll just have that go down to a B. So we could emulate the sound of a five string bass. So now if I want to come here, I could have my E string layer. I could have my A string layer. And let's go ahead and make layers for our D and G strings. So we'll call this our D string. Okay, and again, since we have the auto visibility set, I will close our A string folder, open the D string folder, select all the samples, and drag it directly onto individual notes there. And let's go ahead and right click, 
mapping and we'll come here and map it to again the text in the sample edit name a new layer for our g string and do the same exact thing and what's great is once i have this template set up i can use this template for other instruments so once i have a template set up it's very easy to just simply save it as a template and makes your other future sampling much faster all right so now i'm going to have my e string layer my a string d string g string now i could I want to be able to kind of intelligently switch between these but i also probably want a layer of chromatic so i could play all the notes so what i want to do now is we'll create two new layers and I want to create layers that will have uh, open string voicings as well as all fretted string voicings. So we'll call this open all notes. And what I want to do now, instead of dragging from my project window, since I have these samples defined, I can now come here and I could just select the samples right here. So now I could open up my A string tab and we'll select the samples. And now to our G string. And I'll use some, I'll just kind of alternate notes between the higher two strings. For these. Now what I could do is since I have these selected I'm going to copy and I could go to my open all notes right here and what I want to do now is simply paste. Okay so now we have that selected. Now I want to create an alternate layer now with all fretted voicings. So we'll come right here, right click, new layer, and we'll call it fretted. And again, I'll come right over here, and I just want to go up to, let's say, like the seventh fret on the instrument on each string. So now we'll open up the A string. Now we'll just kind of alternate again between some of the higher notes here. And again, copy, right click. We'll go to our fretted voices all. And again, paste. So now we have all this set up. Now what I want to do is now be able to intelligently switch between these different sample layers. We don't have to necessarily set up very complicated scripting, but what we can do is add what we call megatrig. So I'm going to set up different megatrig conditions. So I'm going to come over here. Let's go to, let's say, my open strings. And what I want to do here is we'll create a new, right-click, new MIDI module to Megatrick. And as we do this, I'm going to come right over here to my MIDI modulation. Now I can set up just about any type of MIDI condition and up to eight different Boolean variations. But I just wanted to set it up for a simple key switch. So I want a note key switch. And I want this to be C0. And I can set up very complicated scenarios if I want to be a C0 key switch with velocity between 
40 and 60 when my modulation wheel is at 127. I could do set up scenarios like that. Now let's come over here and let's add a new key switch right here. So we'll say new mega trig and we want this to be, let's say D zero key switch. And you could actually see that as I add the key switches, these will actually turn this yellowish color. So this will indicate that this is not a note that's playing a sample, but a note that's used as a key switch. And let's come right here and say for my E string, and we'll set up a couple more of these mega trigs. So again, no complicated scripting, just very easy to come right here. Okay, now to the A string. And we'll just set two more mega trigs here for my D and G strings. And our last mega trig here. All right, so now we have all of our mega trig set up. And now what I want to do is actually just simply save my program. So as I come here, I'm going to right click. Now I could export this as a VST preset with all the samples. I could export just the samples, but I'm going to come right over here and say, we'll do a save program. So we're going to call this uh, jazz bass with one Z and I could actually come here and I could actually put different subcategories. So I say, okay, I want this to be an electric bass. Um, and I could actually kind of put it different categories or different characters. So if I say, okay, I want this to be clean and I want this to be uh, electric and I could put different character tags with it right there. And now I'll hit okay. And now that I have this created, I'll go ahead and remove the program. Come right there. And I go to load in Helium 4 and I'll just say, we want it to be, I could just actually type in Jazz like that. We'll now just drag this or double click. It'll load up the program and it's automatically going to assign it an electric base icon right here. And now when I come here, I could actually just take any MIDI track that I have and I'm going to set this up for my jazz base. Now, since I've created the samples in Halion and it's a VST 3.5 instruments, one of the great things is I can now just choose to import the key switches and this would automatically open up all the key switches that we've come and selected right here. So now if I actually wanted to kind of audition some of the different elements and sounds, I could actually just come right here. And as I play different notes, I could say, I want this G to be played on the G string, like an open G string, or I want it to be played on the D string. You can hear there's different tones or the A string or just my uh, E string. So the same note, but really, really different tones. So now if I wanted to listen to this, I can now just kind of now play. And as I open up my key editor, I can now just choose different samples. So if I want this to now all play back on op with open voicings, I could come right here. And as I play back, Starting right here, I want it to be all fretted. Or I want these all to be on the E string. So very, very easy to make really high quality samples using the tools in Halion 4, Cubase, and Wavelab.